every moment in our life, there's a chance to be curious about ourselves. What am I? What is this right now? In a formal meditation, we're doing it, it's, it's kind of the job of the moment. We think in our everyday life, we get lost in I'm doing this or I'm doing that. So now I personally am giving the Dharma talk. As Dennis said to everyone, this is completely practice. What am I? What is this? What is there? If we're driving our cars, we're doing driving practice. If we're cooking, we're doing cooking practice. What am I? Who's cooking? How do I decide? Dennis talked a lot about the struggle of showing ourselves to others. Well, when you're cooking, how much are you concerned about how others are going to react and respond to your food versus just cooking? While you're cooking, your self, your small self, arises. You have what's going on in your mind. You have the feelings, maybe the fear of judgment of other people, or the strong desire that those who I'm serving this food to are going to think it's fantastic. I have my whole sense of self built on it being a good meal. And then sometimes you wait. And you wait, and you look around the table, and people are eating, but nobody's saying anything. And then the fear starts to arise. Maybe the anger starts to arise. What's wrong with them? How come nobody's saying anything? Don't they understand? So all of this happens kind of simultaneous to cutting the onions. So as I'm cutting the onions, part of my practice is to focus what am I? What is my job right now? Just cut. And then all of these thoughts and feelings and desires and impulses and confusions are also playing for me. Practice is attending to all of it. Our usual mind thinks, oh, if I practice, I'll get rid of all that. And of course, it's lovely when we find our breath, our mind calms down, our ego calms down. We're not so worried about what everybody else is thinking, but we can just let, cut that onion. And then the, 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 the odor of the onion hits my eyes and my eyes start to tear and to be there in the tearing without judgment. It's lovely to do that. But sometimes there's, fuck, my eyes are tearing. Why did these damn onions have to be that way? Even to an onion, we can take out our, um, our, our anger. But when the anger arises, can we have enough distance to say, what is that? Where did that come from? This onion didn't do anything. It's easy with an onion because the onion... It's just this onion that we're cutting. And yet, in our hearts, in our minds, we can take out all of our frustration on an onion. There's a, a story from the time of the Buddha, and um, it has to do with, just imagine, put yourself in this situation. You're in a rowboat on a lake, and you're rowing, and you're rowing, and it's a beautiful day, and you're happy. And then this boat starts to come towards you. And you, you're you rowing, you figure, okay, the boat, they'll take care of it. We have a deal as human beings, we don't bump into each other. But the boat keeps coming. The boat keeps coming. And you get angry. That damn person who's rowing that boat, what are they doing? What's wrong with them? And suddenly, as the boat comes up, you see, there's nobody in the boat. What happens to your anger then? Where does your anger come from? We project this discomfort onto the world. 
So every single moment in our life is a practice moment. When we chant the four great vows, the third vow that we use, many of you have heard me say this before, but the third vow we use is the teachings are endless. We vow to learn them all. That's okay. Some other Zen centers use a phrase. They say, Dharma gates are endless. I vow to enter them all. What that means is each and every moment is a Dharma gate. Each and every moment is a chance to find out who we are, to allow this moment to reveal, rather than me making separate, to allow the moment to reveal itself.